It has definitely been a while, and I miss you guys, man. Hopefully you guys have been paying attention to uh, all the random YouTube shorts and posts on my Instagram and stuff. I just haven't had enough updates for me to record a full-blown video like this for you guys. But today's the day. I think we made a lot of progress in a cool amount of the tanks. Uh, some tanks didn't make enough progress that I might even shut them down. But we're going to go over everything today. First thing I got to do is turn on these lights. So, bam, that one's not turning on for some reason. On, on, when is this turning on? Oh, there you go, on. So I haven't really been anywhere. Uh, everything's still kind of the same. Uh, Pyara, you know, the Bashirs, all those guys right there. I've really just been focusing on raising and training this Pyara right here. Look at him, look at him, so nice. Actually, speaking of Pyara, Let's go ahead and uh, grab a fish for him to eat. I'm not too sure if he's going to eat this, but uh, I just want to defrost it now so we can give it to him later. So for the past month, I've been trying to train my Pyara to eat dead foods. Um, that worked maybe after the first week or two. And then now I'm trying to train my Pyara to eat off of the floor. And what I mean by eating off the floor is picking up food from the ground level of the aquarium. This is actually a pretty big achievement because pyaras usually eat food as they're falling down or if there's some sort of movement. So eating food that's off the ground is really good, especially because their teeth and their jaws are, are meant to like kind of attack like this. So it's kind of hard for them to pick up food off the ground. But mine did uh, like what? two or three days ago. I'll go ahead and put the footage up right here. Technically, it's not eating off the ground, but the food did touch the ground for a little bit and then he swiped at it. So that's definitely progress. Look at that, look at that, look at that. You guys can't smell in the camera, but it stinks. This stuff stinks. And I have a whole bunch of it in this bag. Feels good to make videos again, man. Uh, it's been a while. I just don't really have too many updates for the fish room. So I try to save uh, good updates and big updates for later on down the road, if that makes sense. And defrost. Let's go let it defrost. Make sure you wash your hands. <laughs> Alright, so while that's defrosting, I'll go ahead and give you guys updates on all the other stuff. So yeah, staying focused on the Pyara tank. Uh, the pink tail Chelsea is doing really good. It's eating everything. I probably didn't even need to use the pink tail Chelsea to teach this guy because this particular pink tail Chelsea that I got, uh, it doesn't really like to eat meaty foods. It likes to eat pellets for some reason. Maybe it was raised off of pellets. So technically I use this pink tail Chelsea as a dipper fish and not really a teacher fish, but either way it serves a purpose. It lets the Pyara know that everything's good and uh, I'm not a threat and um, usually with another fish in the tank it's less skittish so nowadays I notice that the pyre just swims around the aquarium and uh, it's just chilling now so the decor in this tank is still the same it's still driftwood and nubius that's attached and all that stuff there's a little bit of algae yeah I'm just gonna wait for it to build up a little bit more and then I'll spend some time to kind of brush it all off but either way it's uh, still pretty good the nubius is looking good it's just really covered in algae at this point but other than that, it's, it's it's growing. So that's pretty much it for this tank. Let's go ahead and move on to this tank right here. All right, so even though this is the Gulper catfish tank, I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys an update on all the little fish in this tank first. Let me see if I can focus on them. Bam, look at that. Look at that. All right, so all the baby rice fish that's in this tank has grown significantly. They're, they're like, they're like teenager fish now. So you can see they're just kind of, uh, roaming around the aquarium there's some here and some there they're pretty quick though so i can't really focus on like all of them right now but they're just swimming around this tank freely just chilling also i have this dwarf chain loach if you guys remember from the wolf days of the other house this dwarf chain loach was is like best friend it was always chilling with the wolf and the wolf never killed this particular fish the other chain loach he killed it but the wolf used to chill with this one all the time, and in this tank, it's just kind of doing its own thing too. So, yeah, just running around looking for snails to kill and all that stuff. Some people did ask for updates on the uh, snail eradication progress and all that stuff. 
I think it's working out pretty well. In this tank, I have not seen one snail. Every tank that these dwarf chain loaches were in, uh, all the snails got just killed, destroyed. It eats anything. It eats pellet foods, flake foods, uh, when I used to feed flake, um, snails, all that stuff. Even dead shrimp. It'll, it'll eat anything. In this tank, though, there is one ember tetra right here. This is just one of the fries that we had left. I don't know if you can focus on them. But yeah, result of accidental breeding. One of the fish that we couldn't accidentally breed, which would have been tight, is uh, these rasboras right here. They're not chili rasbora. I forgot what they're called. But um, I have a couple in here, and they've never bred in this tank. I've only bred the rice fish and the ember tetras. Uh, and then another fish that we tried to breed too, but which we couldn't get to breed was the Corydoras. I just don't know where they're at either. There they are. Cory Yang is still in this tank with me, chilling. They just have not bred. So yeah, we have a whole bunch of random stuff in here. Corydoras, loaches, rice fish, shrimp, autos, you name it. But the main star of this tank is this guy right here. Most people don't like messing with their fish. But for the sake of the video, I will get him out. There he is. That's pretty easy, just had to tap his tail real quick. There's my gopher cat. So for the ones that's been asking for updates on this guy, there he is. He's definitely lost the rear hump that's on, that was on his back. I put him on a diet for a little bit and then he went back to normal shape. Oh, there he goes. But yeah. Uh, when I first had him, he was super overweight. Like, I was overfeeding like crazy. Uh, I, I just thought that gopher catfish had to eat a lot. But I guess they didn't really have to. And then I just overfed and it got super fat. But now, as you can see, its its size isn't too bad. It's just hard to get him out this uh, tube because he's just super comfortable in it. Yeah, this is all he does. He just kind of does this until food comes out. And then he'll, he'll eat. Let me see if I can get him. Nah, uh, he's not going to come out. There's one way to get him out, and that's with food, so... Uh, hopefully the fish is done thawing, and let's go ahead and check it out. So let me go ahead and open this real quick. Go ahead and drop it down. Yeah. Watch this. So it's gonna take us... It's gonna take a while. I like watching the... The smaller fish go at the, the bigger food and stuff. They just kind of pick stuff, pick like little scales and pieces off of it. I guess that's nutrition, right? They get their nutrition off of this, but eventually the catfish will come and just destroy this piece. Hopefully. Technically, if I leave this in here long enough, all of the shrimp will come in and eat this stuff too, so... Everyone just kind of gets their, their piece before the catfish comes in and messes it up. I think I messed with this one a little too much. <laughs> I moved his uh, house a little closer and uh, he's just looking at me now, but I went ahead and threw one of the fish in and the little fish are loving it, so they're just kind of picking away at it and doing what they need to do. Then eventually this guy's going to come through and just finish it all up, so instead of kind of egging the catfish on to eat it as fast as possible, I'm going to just let the little fish kind of enjoy what they need to eat first before this guy has to take at it, but I'm sure what it's going to do is wait for me to move the camera out of his face and then it'll probably go for the little fish. But you can see he's pretty docile. Look, that little shrimp is just chilling right there next to its face. And I'm sure that shrimp could just jump on the catfish and pick stuff off of it if it wanted to. But yeah, this catfish is chilling, man. It'd rather just use its energy to eat, you know, stuff like this rather than chase these little guys around. So, yep. Catfish is doing very, very good. So yeah, while we let that uh, be taken care of, let's go ahead and feed the pyra. Kind of jumping back and forth here, but you know, it's kind of rolling with the punches. So the pyra ate a pretty big one last time. So I'm gonna go ahead and give him uh, kind of like an okay size one. I'm not too sure if it's gonna eat, but we'll see. Cool. Oh yeah. Oh. 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 Oh, you messed with it. He messed with it. Here, let me throw in another one just for S and G's. S and G's is shits and giggles. Check it out, check it out, check it out, check it out. Whoa. 
Oh, look at that. So yeah, so this time it didn't really eat off the floor. I think it's because the Pintel Chelsea was messing with it. But as you can see, it is pretty good with the training. I gotta get this piece out real quick. Look at him. Just devoured that piece. Messed up. It's all good. It is all good. I'm just glad this one is eating like regularly now. So yeah, as long as it's eating, I'm fine. But that's pretty much how I feed the Pyra. And uh, it's, it's doing pretty good, honestly. Wolf time. This one has been kind of picky on what it wants to eat. Used to eat everything, but nowadays it is pretty picky. I tried feeding it anchovies and stuff like everyone else, but it spits it out. He's here just waiting for food. All right, it's waiting. Watch this. Every time I do this, it spits it out. And it's not too big too because wolves have teeth, so I should be able to just dis Oh. See? It doesn't like it. Oh, I guess it I guess it's fine today. I guess we're fine today. I tried doing this yesterday and it didn't work. But I guess we're okay today. Huh. Alright. I guess we're good. I guess I guess at least someone wants to eat. So I went ahead and cut up the pieces of fish into maybe like quarters and halves and all that stuff. That way all the guys in here can eat. And also the Bashir in this tank can eat. Oh, looks like someone wants more, huh? Not right now. You know what? I'm gonna feed these smaller pieces to the Bashir over here. Fish tail and fish head is pretty good for like, you know, all the random goodies and stuff that fish need to survive, like fish bones and eyeballs and stuff like that. I think the wolf wants more. Let's see if he wants more. Oh, now someone wants to eat. Now someone's down to eat. Yesterday, no one wanted to eat, bruh. Bashirs love this stuff. At least my Bashir do. Look at this. Instantly eat. Bashirs are pigs. They eat anything. Look at that. Look at that. Absolutely just eat anything I give it. One piece there. They're really good at like finding the food too. This one's a little too late. Oh. I think everyone got a piece except for that one back there. But I'm going to feed pellet foods later on down the road. So it's chill. Maybe like tonight or something. But every little piece is just taken by these guys. Speaking of Bashirs, these are my big guys. So, and these are doing really good. As you can see. They are just, they're just massive. They're just chilling. Look at them, looking for more food. Always hungry. These are the best um, fish to have if you have like a monster tank. If you have like these guys at the bottom and you guys have, I don't know, big armadas or big pyres and all that stuff and they don't really eat all the food that you give it, this is a really good cleanup crew option. They, they don't eat foods as crazily as let's say for example a catfish or something but these guys right here they they'll pick up almost everything look at them so i had bigger pieces of driftwood in this tank but i went ahead and just reduced it only to these smaller pieces right here because anytime i throw food in this tank and even this tank i think the scent kind of picks up from both the aquariums and then these two start digging like crazy they'll smash through all the wood try to find little bits and pieces of the food and like just like this just looking for food and uh yeah they'll just mess their snouts up and their scratch their face and all that stuff so i just leave smaller pieces of driftwood in here uh, little bits of almond leaves and all that stuff but yeah whenever i throw food in here like i'll feed these guys like separately but i think because since the tanks are connected by the sump the scent kind of travels through and it makes these guys go crazy and they look for food and yeah they just hurt themselves on the wood so 
That's why I just kind of have smaller pieces of driftwood in here. This one right here, it has to be like 15 or 16 inches now. I think this guy's pretty... Let's see, let's see, actually let's see right now. It's a little bent, but once it gets to the front, It's like 16, look, 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 oh, it like a new 16 and a, or 15 and a half, 15 or 16 and a half, whatever. But it just knew that I was measuring it. Did you see that? <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, you want to get measured? Cool. Let's go ahead and measure. Oh no, you want to get measured. All right. Come here. This is my smaller lap. Based off of the distance, I would say he's like 13. Wolf's like, what the hell are you doing, Dow? I think Wolf wants to get measured too. Oh, here you go, here you go. What the, why is everyone coming over here? Look at this. Oh yeah, you can see the size difference now. He is, what the, I would say 14. 14 inches or so if you guys want more detailed updates and all that good stuff with these big guys let me know down in the comments below maybe i'll respond back with some youtube shorts just explaining certain things but yeah they've grown significantly you can actually tell like how much room they really have on from the side all right so quick update on this tank right here nothing new um these two cb laps are still chilling actually i feel like they're living like kings right now because there's only three fish in this specific uh, enclosure one of them being a uh, geo there's that little guy back there and then uh, this one right here you might be asking why uh, most of my big guys are in here and why I'm not putting them in this tank for the meantime is because I mean I'm gonna be transferring over this fish sometime soon anyways so uh, later on down the road it's gonna be these two in here so it wouldn't look too empty one switcheroo that I might do is I might put the geo back in with these big boys and then I might put the wolf back in here I'm not too sure uh, one of the reasons why is because I did notice that the wolf likes to just chill in one spot it doesn't really move it just likes to hang out here I think this one likes to be in smaller tanks even though having it in a bigger tank would be nice and is nicer for it health wise and all that stuff but I think it might be a lot better in a smaller tank like this uh, it's more confined it's less movement um maybe even less stress because when these guys swim they swim and then this one just hiding in the corner so uh, i think for the sake of my wolf i might end up putting this one back into uh enclosure like this i'm not too sure if i covered this in my last update but i went ahead and added these filter socks see it and uh this is my way of providing mechanical filtration for this system i was gonna do the whole like make a shelf thing you know the plastic drawers and all that good stuff in this vicinity but i feel like this setup right here is is like foolproof it's just a filter sock in the sump itself and it's just bypassing the water through it and it doesn't disrupt the k1 as you can see i forgot what micron these filter socks were but they're pretty fine and i have to flush them out every single water change or else they start overflowing you can see right here that this one's getting a little bit uh, dirty. This one right here is still doing okay. K1 is still doing good. I went ahead and bought um, maybe like two more gallons of K1 Micro. So it's looking a lot more full now. That is definitely enough K1 for at least this setup. If I need to get more or have a bigger tank, I'll just get a bigger trash can and then throw more K1 in there. Oh, you may be wondering what's going on with the Aquascape setup. Go ahead. Fluval. Manual. There you go. This is what's left of the Aquascape setup. It's just algae, overgrown plants, and one garami that I cannot get out for my life. Let's see if I can zoom in on him. This guy is not coming out of this tank. Yeah, this tank is pretty run down. It still has some stuff in here, you know, shrimps and plants and all that stuff, but. 
for the most part, this tank is pretty dead. We're going to be shutting this tank down. My fiance wants to keep it better. So we're going to have this set up specifically for uh, a placat beta or maybe even a half moon beta. And um, yeah, we're going to do a big like overhaul of this aquarium. So the Dragonstone, we're going to take it out. We're going to clean it. Look, you can't even tell it's Dragonstone anymore. It's covered in algae. If you don't know what Dragonstone looks like, it looks like this. See, very porous, very nice, very good, clean, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to have it on display in front of my door. This is definitely a fish keeper's house right here. But yeah, look how nice Dragonstone is. And then look at this Dragonstone. Jeez, Lewis. I did spend way more time um, at the old house taking care of the tank and all that stuff. All the Monte Carlo is gone. They just lifted up and then it just disappeared. It just like disintegrated. What's left is this uh, Ritala, I think. I think it's called Ritala. That's what's left of it. It's barely holding on for. Actually, it's not doing that bad. But yeah. Look, see, I still have little fish in here. They're just hard to remove from this tank. All the fish in here are gonna move into this tank and then we're gonna move this, this setup into my fiance's office and then we're gonna set her with a nice bed of fish. I'll go ahead and record that whole setup process later down the road when we get to it. But as of right now, this tank is pretty much just waiting to be moved. So yeah, that's the Monte Carlo project. It is officially over. You know, actually while he's here, six, 16 16 or 15 whatever but that's pretty much it for today's video I've, I've been trying to get this one against the glass for the longest time but uh it finally behaves but that's pretty much it uh, i just want to give you guys updates on the bashirs the pyre everything that i got going on right now mainly the pyre actually because uh, we're just waiting for it to grow out and then we can go ahead and move it on to the five foot tank like we've been saying for the past like 10 videos but yeah if i take on new projects and all that stuff you guys will be the first to hear about it through youtube shorts or tiktok and instagram and all that stuff if you guys aren't following me on instagram and tiktok i'll leave a link down in the comments below or actually no not the, not the comments below the description below if you guys have any questions leave them in the comments below you know what i'm saying but yeah that's pretty much it for today's video hope you guys enjoyed it stay tuned for the next one and stay tuned for updates on all the new projects that we talked about today and hopefully uh, updates on my current guys right here. I'm trying to get them to at least 20. If they can hit 20 by the next, I should know that that's impossible. They won't hit 20. If they're 17 by the next update, I'll be really happy. Anyways, that's pretty much it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the next one. And peace, guys. Mm -hmm.